and this is the second incident in which the state has cowered to Islamist bullying in the north of England. Your state that you think will protect you is already cowering from Islamist bullying because secularism, liberal progressive secularism is born out of a reaction to Christianity. So their eyes are filtered to see when Christians are gaining influence, power and authority in society and they will stand against it. So, the boy scuffed the Quran and the Quran and then started to receive death threats and his mother was forced to go to a mosque and to make a begging, pleading apology. And this, ladies and gentlemen, says a lot about the UK and it says a lot about the secular state today. I'm reading from the Daily Mail. Last week, a 14-year-old British boy was forced to flee his home and go into hiding, fearing for his life not because he swindled a county line's drug crook or was the sole witness of a heinous crime, rather because of what happened, because of what he did to a, a Quran. I'm, I'm just picking phrases from the full article to try and cut it down. It all started as a forfeit for losing a video game. The boy was asked by his friends to buy a copy of the Quran and bring it to the school in Kettlethorpe High in Wakefield, West Yorkshire. To what end remains unclear. There was no malicious intent involved, but even for an impulsive adolescent, it was obviously foolhardy. Why was it foolhardy? Why are we all admitting that there are gross acts of intimidation and harassment coming from the Muslim community and then dancing around it. Why are you talking just to the cameras? There's what it says here, here particularly given that the holy is, book once inside the, the school became There's accidentally cameras, damaged, there, though only slightly, not by the talking. boy's hands. No here, so the boy damaged the someone that the boy's didn't damage the Quran. He says that there's no one around. Can he do the numbers himself? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people are listening. And this clown says no one's listening. That, that's, that's, that's what he's saying. I'm just talking to the cameras. I'm talking to you, sister. I'm going to talk to you, brother. Right? He's just, he's just, brother, don't feed the troll. Just ignore him. He's just upset because no one will listen to him if he goes and speaks. Let me continue. Don't feed the troll. Nobody, certainly not the boy, could have foreseen what would have happened next. He was suspended along with three other pupils. Police began investigating and recorded a hate incident. Labour councillors stoked tensions by falsely claiming on social media that the book was desecrated. So the police investigated a hate incident, the school suspended him, and Labour councillors started whipping up interfractional, intercommunal uh, antagonism by saying that a Quran was desecate, desecrated. The matter re reached the desk the Secre of Secretary of State, Suella Braverman said, declared herself deeply concerned by the case and the way it was handled. The educational sector and the police have a duty to prioritize the physical safety of children over the hurt feelings of adults. That's happening in the UK. A child had a Quran knocked out of his hand. The Quran was slightly damaged on the cover. And then that child was subject to death threats by other Muslim students. The teachers did not punish the students for the death threats. They punished the child. The police did not investigate the other youth for a hate incident. 
they investigated the child. The teachers did not exclude the pupils for death threats. They excluded the child. There is a problem in liberal progressive society. Liberal progressive society is cowering to Islam. Liberal progressive society is backing down from standing up for its all its so-called proclaimed values. This incident that happened to this child in this school is in the same area where a teacher had to go into hiding because he received death threats for teaching his class about blasphemy in which he used an image of Muhammad. And he said to the students before he showed it to them, some of you may find this offensive. If you don't want to be here, you can leave. And then he continued with the lesson. Muslims inside the Muslim community started a hate campaign against him and he had to flee into hiding. None of the people who made death threats against him were ever investigated. None of them arrested for a hate crime. None of them prosecuted for breaking the law. The secular liberal progressive state is not even enforcing its own laws. I want to applaud the Secretary of State for what she said, because she's right. British schools and British police should prioritise the defence, the physical defence of the child over the hurt feelings of adults. But they didn't. They prioritised the hurt feeling of the adult over the safety of the child. Why? Because the liberal progressives who are in our police forces, in our schools, are cowards. They are moral cowards. They are intellectual cowards. They are cowards without conviction. And they have a fetish about Islam that means that Islam can never be criticised. Muslims can never be seen to do anything wrong. And even if they do, it's your fault, not theirs. That is why the teachers uh, excluded the child. That is why the police investigated the child. That is why the councillors blamed the child. And that is why none of those three authorities went after the people that broke the law. To threaten someone with death in the United Kingdom is a criminal offence. And there was no action taken. What did the police do? They went and had a word with the child that made the death threat and they gave him some advice. But what did they do when they heard about the other child? They started an investigation for a hate crime. There is a double standard emerging in our society and you're all ignoring it. And you're all ignoring it because you've all been kowtowed by the same liberal elites who are establishing the double standard in the first place. Call them out on their hypocrisy. Call them out on their double standards. So here is what I say and what I call for action and for what should happen as a citizen in this democracy. That head teacher should be sacked. She has a legal responsibility to uphold British values. Yes. British values do not include a blasphemy law protecting Islam. British values include freedom of speech. She has failed in her legal responsibility and she should be sacked from her position. The police officers that did not investigate the death threats against the child should all be sacked 
and their pensions should be cancelled. Every one of them, from top to bottom, that was involved in the case and turned a blind eye to a death threat should all be sacked yes. and barred from working for the police. And the children and anyone else who made a death threat against that child should be arrested and prosecuted for breaking the law. Yes. That is what should have happened at the beginning and that is what should happen now. And this is the second incident in which the state has cowered to Islamist bullying in the north of England. Your state that you think will protect you is already cowering from Islamist bullying. I'll tell you why. Because the liberal progressive secularists, their ideology contains within it a contradiction. The society that they want to create is a society free from the church and free from Christianity. They have a blind spot when it comes to Islam and Sharia law. So they want to push Christians out of politics. They want to make you Christians silent when you stand up for your faith and they'll accuse you of every kind of bigotry under the sun when you try to live according to your religion. Benita, could I get a bottle of water, please? But if the Muslims do exactly the same thing, the state cowers to them. And I've just shown you an example of it. Because secularism, liberal progressive secularism, is born out of a reaction to Christianity. So their eyes are filtered to see when Christians are gaining influence, power and authority in society and they will stand against it. But when the Muslim community is gaining influence, power and authority in society and pushing Sharia law into society, the liberal progressives can't see it because many of those elites are white middle class people who have never had a black friend or a friend of colour in their lives and they have confused the category of Muslim with the category of race. And they think if they stand up to the Muslims making death threats that they are being racist. And that's why they won't stand up against Islamist militants in the UK. And we saw that when tens of thousands of white girls were industriously and systematically raped by Muslim gangs across the north of England in their thousands. And Labour said nothing. And the police did nothing. And they did nothing because they said on record they were scared of being accused of being racist. Christians, what must we do? We must recognize an uncomfortable truth. The uncomfortable truth that we must recognize is that we cannot depend upon the secular state to be there to protect us. The secular state of Nigeria failed to protect the Christians of Nigeria. The secular state of France has failed to protect the churches of France. The secular state of the United States of America has failed to protect the Christians of Dearborn, USA, who are also being harassed by Muslims. Now, I want to be clear. I am not saying all Muslims are doing this. I'm saying a tiny percentage is. I'll even put a figure on it, 2%. But what's 2% of a billion people? It's 40 million people. What's 2% of 4 million Muslims in the UK? 
It's around 20,000 people. That's enough to fill a town. And the state won't stand up to them because your liberal state is weak. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that we should organize within the church to guarantee our own security in the same way that the Jewish community at Golders Green does. They have their own security service that cooperates with the police, is known by the police, it operates within the law to protect the Jewish community. Why did Jesus worship Allah on the cross? We Christians, we Christians must follow Christ's teachings to love and to serve one another. Don't feed the troll. Sister, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. Brother, don't talk to him. Just ignore him. Sister, he's feeding on your energy. Just ignore him. Okay, if you guys want to listen to me, come forward. Come forward. Come forward. If they want to talk, come forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, as Christians, we must defend our community by every legal means. And we must organize ourselves to do it within the church. And we must recognize that secularism is failing and has failed. And we must aspire as Christians. We must aspire. We must aspire as Christians for a new Christendom, for a politic that is not secular. We must oppose as Christians the secular liberal state because the secular liberal state will lose the battle against radical Islam. It is already losing in Nigeria. It is already losing in France. It is already losing in the USA. Do not commit yourselves to failure, my brothers and sisters. Instead, commit yourselves to a different vision of Europe. One that is a new Christendom in which our politics, our economy and our culture is governed by a muscular Christianity that is willing to go toe to toe with the Islamist and to bear down upon them all the apparatus of the state without mercy or pity. There are two laws that we can pass against the Islamists that would crush their movement in two moves. Firstly, you bring back a law that states that anyone who supports the Islamist agenda can be kicked out of the country. They can be banished. It's a law we had in this country before and it's a law that we can have right across Europe. Anyone who sympathizes in any way with the Islamist agenda should be banished from the country and not allowed to return. Second law, second law, that we pass a law that says those who are found guilty of supporting the Islamist agenda should be made outlaws. Outlaws means that they receive no protection from the state from any act. And if you make these Islamists outlaws, the British people will deal with the Islamists themselves. If the state will not deal with the Islamists, then let the people deal with the Islamists. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let me debate this heckler. So, 
you can ask the Holy Ghost. I want, want. I want to debate you about something. I'm not debating you about anything. Yeah, well, I'm going to try and debate you anyway. Well, I'm not interested. Oh, he's walking away. <laughs> he was heckling me a minute ago, and suddenly he's lost interest. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions on the topic that you heard today? Any questions before we go? <coughs> yeah, go on. Um, so you were saying that the way to deal with the Muslims... No, I didn't say that. Okay, what did you say? Sorry, go on. said deal with the Islamists. Okay. I made a distinction between the Islamists and the Muslims. Okay, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that Muslims sit across... Wait, wait a second, because I want to be clear. I'm not sure what, what, you, what you were saying. So go ahead. Right. So Muslims sit across a spectrum, right? A spectrum of belief. There are some Muslims that just treat their faith like a culture. They go to mosques for funerals, weddings, and, and, and circumcisions. And there are some Muslims who believe their faith devoutly, but they're not interested in imposing it on other people. And there are some Muslims that believe that because they're Muslims and because Islam is right, that not only should I follow it, but they believe that I should be forced to live under Sharia law. When I say Islamists, I'm speaking about those Muslims who believe that I should be forced to live under uh, Sharia law. That's who I'm talking about. So now we're clear who I'm talking about. What's your question? Well, it seems to me like you were talking from a perspective which is not involving God. So, go on. What's the question? So, it seems to me you said the way to deal with them was with laws... With yes, laws. We should deal with them with laws. We should pass are you, are laws. You a I'm a Christian. So why deal with them with laws? Right. So why deal with, not, with the laws? Why not, well, hold on. One more question. Sorry to add to that. So go why on. not deal with them with love? Right. Like so let me address. The, let me address that question. Let me address. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Okay. You're not a Muslim, are you? No. Okay. I look. I look Turkish, but I'm not Turkish. Okay. Right. So so let, let's be clear. Love for the Christian is not some passive. Force. It's not a passive energy in the Christian worldview. Love expresses itself in good law because love should influence my life as an individual. It should influence my family as a collective. It should influence my fellowship, my society and my state. So what I'm saying is it's not loving to allow what's happened, the two examples that I use, you might not have been here for it, let me finish answering your question. It's not loving to allow Muslims to force a teacher into hiding under death threat because he was trying to do his job teaching students about blasphemy. It's not loving to allow a, stu a child who's autistic to be forced into hiding because of death threats. No, I'm going to finish. No, I'm going to finish. It's not loving to allow a child to be forced into hiding because of death threats because he, the uh, Quran had its cover scuffed, right? That's not loving. It's also illegal. It's not loving to not enforce the law. So if we talk about love in terms of the state, what we're talking about is good law well applied. And what I'm criticizing is an absence of sufficient law and the laws that we do have are not being applied sufficiently. Okay, so people have free will. They're going to live their lives how they choose to live their lives. So I understand what you're saying. So should a Muslim... I have free choice to make... I have free will to make the choices I want to make. So should a Muslim... Even if they're wrong... No, answer me hold this on, question. Hold on, hold on, should hold on, a Muslim... I let you talk, let me talk. Go on. Even though they're wrong... Everyone here has free will to choose what they want to do. Right, let life. me ask you a question. Do you have the right to threaten me with death? Give me a second. Do I have the right to Yes, do you have a legal right to threaten me with death? I can answer this question very quickly for you. Let me just... Why not? Right, so... No, no, he's going to try and run away. So, so the, the, the actual answer to the question is... I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Right? Legally, you do not have the right. Morally, you do not have the right. Okay. Why? Because you claim that you're a Christian. Yeah. Christ says you should love your neighbor as love you love yourself. yourself. Okay, yeah. That means the good that I want for me is the good that I want for you. 
So I don't want to be threatened by death, so I don't want you to be threatened by death, which means that as a society, we pass a law that says it's illegal to threaten people with death. I gave two examples where Islamists in the north of England have threatened a teacher and a student with death and the police have done nothing. The, the Labour Party has done nothing. Now, which is more loving? For me to ignore the problem or for me to cry out for justice? What's more loving? Each person is going to deal with it. You haven't answered my question. What's more loving? Okay, give me the scenario now and I'll tell you what I'll Right, you need to pay attention in this conversation because I, I literally just gave you the scenario. So let's do it again, right? Okay. Now you're claiming... Okay, listen, listen. You're, be respectful, yeah? Right. So here's the question, because you're claiming that you're a Christian. Pass those two laws, every Islamist would be driven out of the country. So an outlaw is someone who's not protected by the state. And you'd be okay with someone... I would be okay with every convicted Islamists, not just random accusations by members of the general public, but through a proper judicial process, if the evidence shows that someone is an Islamist and they're found guilty in a court of law, that they should be declared an outlaw and banished. So if they don't flee the country, anyone can do anything to them and they receive no protection. And, and, and you think that's okay? Yes. Absolutely I do. Yes. Because, you agree what you're saying? yes, because these Sorry. Islamists, no, these Islamists... No, no, he's not, he's not saying that, not the portion, he's saying like... No, I, I, I said exile along with declaring them outlaws, that's what I said. So you can do anything to them, I can kill them? If they don't leave, yeah. If they don't leave, I, a Christian, can kill them? No, I'm not saying you have to, I'm saying that you wouldn't be breaking the law if you did. And, and, okay, even if it wasn't law... Because the thing is... One second, one second. Right, the way even to if, deal even with... Even if it wasn't law, yeah. you would be okay as a Christian if, to kill them. If it, was, if it was legal, if it was legal, these... You've got to understand the Islamists. Remember, what is an Islamist? How did we define Islamist at the beginning of this conversation? Oh, hold on, hold on. One second. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no, no don't, no, don't no. run away. I'm not going anywhere. Right, so I'm how did we anywhere. define... No, right, no. Me. Okay, so you think second. I'll talk. We defined Islamists. I'm not listen to you, so you're right, don't listen then. I'm, I'm going to talk to this. If so, I'm thinking and you're talking, well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm still going to talk. I'm allowed to talk, right? You you collect your thoughts. When you're ready, come back. But we you're defined. Not, you're not, you're not we define. I'm not. You said you need a time to think. Yeah. Right. So about what you said. So think about it then. I'm going to say something. Islamists are people that think that they can force Islam onto us. One second, forget that. And those people, the only way to deal with a bully a Christian, is, to, is to bully was, them. If it was not illegal, you could kill a, a, a Muslim, uh, not Muslim, sorry, an Islamist. How many people have died at the hands of Islamists in this country? So it, make, it makes it okay for you to do it if they, if they have already done it. So are you saying it's okay for there so, to so blow up children grace, in a stadium? What about grace and mercy? What about, what about, what about grace and mercy? What about those children? Children in that stadium. What about the children in that stadium? The king of What about the children in that stadium? What about what about, what about that teacher? What about that teacher? What about that pupil? What about them? Where's your love for those people? Where's your love for those people? Where the terrorist that blew up the children in the stadium, where he learned this uh, mercenary behaviour. We'll, we'll, Ask him. We'll come back to it. One no, second, no, 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 second. no. Okay, that's what he's coming to you with. That's his question. No, no, one second, one second. That's what he's coming to you with. No, but the, the, the thing that is. Where's you? You, you said that saying, you're a Christian. One second, one second, one second. In my mind, what okay. he's saying wrong is. <laughs> so he said that he was a Christian. That's fine, I'll take him at his word. But love can't be passive against a threat. Love can't be passive against a threat. And the point is, talking about love can't just be applied to the Islamists. Talking about love also has to be applied to the victims of the Islamists. Let me use the example of the family. If someone was going to harm your family, is it loving to do nothing? No. So you've got to act against them. Yeah. Stand up, sword in hand. But, hold on, we're not talking about vigilantism. I've got to be clear, remember I said right at the beginning, we've got to deal with them legally. 
So it's not about you taking the law into your own hands and breaking the law. It's about the law empowering you to fight the Islamists. And in a good society, that's what would happen. But a liberal secular society will not do that. The liberal secular society, as we are seeing in Nigeria, is leading to the deaths of tens of thousands of Christians. As we see in France, it is leading to the destruction of thousands of churches. As we see in the north of England, it is seeing teachers being forced into hiding and students being forced into hiding. As we see in America, it is seeing Christians being harassed in the street. Secular liberal society is failing and Christians should stop thinking that the secular state will protect you. It is not protecting us. So Christians of Nigeria, wake up. Christians of France, wake up. Christians of the UK, wake up. Christians of America, wake up. Stop committing yourself to the secular state and aspire to create a muscular Christian state that will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Islamists and not cower from them like the liberal progressives are doing.